Welcome back to Fred Achando Analysis. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you for your commitment to supporting this channel. In case you are watching us for the first time, please hit the subscribe button and uh, click the notification bell so that whenever we do a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. Please like our videos. When you like the videos, you help the uh, revenue stream. For some of us, this is a full-time job, but that's why those who take their time just to watch our videos, to share their comments, Asante Nisana, I'm really humbled. The death of uh, the LGBTQ uh, activist Edwin Chiloba that took place a few days ago has taken a new twist after the USA has uh, expressed their interest to help Kenya with the investigation into the murder of this young boy. Um, I have seen very many deaths taking place in Kenya of recent, including in Kisi where a father butchered two of his children. I have not seen the international community coming in uh, to help with the investigations. So for the USA and the international community to express interest into investigation of this kind of death, it means there is something. And I want us to look at it very critically. The latest information uh, from the police department is that there is a Chiloba's friend who admitted that he was responsible for the murder of this boy. But it seems that uh, the USA is not satisfied because the Kenyan authority is making it very clear that after uh, preliminary investigations, one person has come up and has admi admitted that he is the one who is responsible for the murder. In fact, uh, uh, the, the murder, uh, his, the Chiloba's friend is called Jackton Odiambo. So Jackton is still in custody and the prosecutor uh, had requested that uh, he be detained for 20, um, or 21 more days for thorough investigation to take place and I think uh, more arrests are still coming up. But the USA still feels that there is something that is not adding up and that's why they are saying that the Kenyan government must conduct a thorough investigation. Uh, U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Prince had indicated that they are ready to come in and help with the investigations. They condemned this murder and they, con uh, they, they sent their condolences to the family. Now, why do you think that even after the Kenyan government has come up and said that uh, his very friend whom they lived with, Mr. Jackson Odeum, is the one who is responsible for the murder, they still feel something is wrong. I think that uh, the manner in which the murder took place is something that is very ridiculous. Any death, regardless of the process of death, is, condemn is, is something that we should condemn. But for someone to be murdered and then you cut his body into pieces is something that raises more eyebrows. In many circumstances you will realize that when someone has been killed and some of the body parts are chopped off or is cut into pieces, that is the, in the Kenyan setting, you will realize that it is always connected to ritualism, maybe some rituals, or a revenge mission. I'm not a ritualist, neither have I killed anyone, but I'm just talking of things that you've seen. So I want to believe that this is one of the reasons why they feel that there is, there is more than meets the eye, that someone is killed and then you, you, you cut... Uh, his body into pieces. The other thing that is raising uh, eyebrows is the fact that we have someone who was arrested and less than an hour he admits that is the one who is, who is responsible for the murder of his friend. Usually it takes time for someone to accept but this looked very easy that uh, Jack Tonodiambo just said that this was my friend that we had some uh, some disagreement concerning our affairs. Maybe he realized that maybe uh, Chilova was had another friend and then he killed him. It, the manner in which he just came up and admitted this is also raising eyebrows. Someone was telling me that, do you think a murderer will just come and say, yes, I murdered him, just like that. So it raises a lot of eyebrows and I think the U.S. Department feels that uh, the, the, the information that is coming from the Kenya Police Service is wanting so they want to hear more more about this i also have a feeling that um, the usa just feels that uh, 
the process of the investigation is not uh, uh, fully admissible. It's not something that is taken seriously. But the point that I want to make here is the fact that I believe that the international community are also using this opportunity to pile pressure on William Ruto to accept the rights of the LGBTQ group. The international community are taking advantage of this or rather using this opportunity to give a warning or rather to encourage the government to ensure that the rights of the LGBTQ are taken care of. Now, if you ask me in Kenya, even though it is, uh, it is um, prohibited to be a lesbian or a gay in Kenya, but I want to say without fear of contradiction that their rights have always been respected because I've never seen people uh, you know, man hunting lesbians or gays because for those who are listening to this uh, analysis, you know very well that we live with them in the society, but we've never interfered with them. I believe that uh, we respect them. You also agree with that we really respect them as long as they don't also interfere with our rights. If you looked at uh, the manner in which this murder attracted international uh, reporting from the press, you will know. Because uh, both the, 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 the CNN, Washington Post, New York Times, The Guardian, all of them highlighted the death of uh, Chiloba. And they were pointing towards one thing. Most of them were saying that Kenya is still engraved in archaic laws. They're calling the laws that prohibit uh, uh, gay and lesbian as archaic and they, they are reporting, if you read most of them were reporting, that we are still using the laws that we inherited from our colonial, colonial masters. Because even after changing our constitution, the constitution that we now have, the 2010 constitution, did not take care fully of the rights. Because what the USA and uh, its pastors want is that we entrench and declare that we accept as a society that it should be in the constitution. If you look at uh, the way in which they try to manhandle presidents, you will realize that they got interest in this. Immediately, any Kenyan uh, president is elected into office. They will take an interview with the, one of the CNN journalists. And one of the things that CNA will always ask is whether they will accept the rights of uh, this group. They did this to President, the former President Uhuru Kenyatta, who told them, uh, because they were putting it to uh, Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta, that this is a question of uh, human rights. And I love the way the former President answered. He told them that this is not a, a, a human rights issue. It is an issue of society. He, he, he said this is a societal issue and he was saying that when the Kenyans pronounced themselves and promulgated a new constitution, they were very clear in their minds what they wanted. And Mr. Uru Kenyatta told the CNN journalist that for now, there are things Kenyans can emulate from the international community because our society have got certain parameters of uh, beliefs and culture and how we want to live. So he made it very clear that this is not the time to start emulating things like gay and lesbian from the international community. Uru Kenyatta did this even in the presence of the former US President Barack Obama and he said that we cannot force it down the throat of Kenyans. If they want it and when the time comes they will say because the democracy that we have demands that Kenyans will always say that they want. In Uganda, our neighboring country, there was a time when President Yoweri Museveni, and I always say that give credit where it belongs, Museveni, many, very many people criticize Museveni that he has overstayed in power. But of this, I want to commend Museveni. He signed an anti gay law. And this really gave him a lot of uh, problems with the international community. In fact, Canada suffered ties with the Ugandan government. But Museven said that I have to protect some of this culture because we are rooted to them. In Zambia, the, 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 Sky, the, the journalist from Sky News gave this question to the, the former president of Zambia. And he was telling him that 
If you don't accept the rights of LGBTQ, this group, then the international community, the USA and included and Britain, will stop giving you AIDS. Zile usaidizi ambao wana tusagia na ayo. And the, 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 that president was very, very categorical. He said, so be it. If you are tying some of these things to your aids and assistance, then let us continue with our poverty. And that is what he said. So I've got a feeling that the international community, based on the question that this has raised from the New York Times, from Reuters and the CNA and Al Jazeera, they are taking this opportunity to ask the government to accept the rights of this rights group. Do you think William Ruto will accept this? If you ask me, I don't think William Ruto will. I know William Ruto is a project of the West. That is a fact if you ask, uh, many Kenyans still believe so. But he's taken too much. He has accepted the GMO. He accepted to leave the ban on uh, electricity, on food, on fuel. But on this, if you ask me, William Ruto cannot accept. Why? This is going to put him, you know, paint him in bad faith with the church. Remember, William Ruto and Rigeti Geshagwa have always uh, pronounced themselves as, as men of God. They say their victory was given to them by God. William Ruto has a church. Rigeti Geshagwa and the second lady, Madame Dorcas, has a church. So if they go ahead and accept uh, LGBT, LGBTQ, I can assure you that this is going to pit them against the church, which they've always used even to campaign, to help them convince the masses. So, he is not going to accept this. But in your own opinion, ladies and gentlemen, do you think there is more than meets the eye in the murder of uh, Edwin Chiloba? Because we must condemn any kind of death, regardless of, uh, of political affiliation, whatever it is, must be condemned. But do you think there is something that the police is not telling us. I think we, this is something that we are waiting to see how, uh, how things transpire. But I want to say on this channel that uh, the family of Edwin Chilova must get justice because this was their son. They must get justice and let them get to the bottom rock of this matter. If USA want to come and help, we agree, but not to force Kenya to adopt something that they're still not very ready for, ladies and gentlemen, and that is my take.